This video will attempt to rank all the stages in the official movie licensed Lord of the Rings video games by EA from worst to best. This includes all the main stages in the Two Towers and the Return of the King. The bonus stages of the Tower of Orthanc and the Palantirs will not be included as those are just enemy rushes with no real meat to them. So let's get to it! Coming in at the bottom is the very first level of the Two Towers, the Prologue. As awesome as the prologue is, all you do is whack a couple of orcs as a seal door until the Sauron cutscene eventually plays. It's to teach the controls of the game and therefore has nothing else going for it if not for the movie cutscenes. Next up is Weathertop, a scene which is outstanding in the movies. In the game, however, you just relight your torch over and over again and bop a few ring wraiths on the head. It's very short and clunky, so it doesn't really pack a lot of fun. Near the bottom of the list is Return of the King's Paths of the Dead. Some may argue this point, but I personally find the ghost enemies to be a boring pain in the butt. They do not behave like normal orcs or urukai, so bane moves do not work on them, and the constant pools of mist slow your character down. It's understandable why it's a stage in the game, as it is Aragorn's important task before Pelennor Fields, but it just feels slow and clunky and a bad start to an otherwise great game. Right next to Paths of the Dead near the bottom of the list is the follow-up stage, The King of the Dead. The only reason this is higher up than the previous stage is because the boss fight at the start is neat and the music during the crumbling escape is fantastic. You get to hear Aragorn shout epic lines throughout so it's a neat farewell to the crappy start of the game. Next near the bottom of the list is the Crack of Doom, there at the end of all things. It is a final battle against Gollum for the destruction of the One Ring, and it's full of quotes from Andy Serkis and Elijah Wood to add to the moment. However, all you do is repeatedly knock Gollum off the cliff. There's not much to it. If it wasn't such a crucial moment in the story, I'd rank the level even lower. Still near the bottom of the list of stages is the Gap of Rohan from the Two Towers. This stage is neat if only because you get to fight the wolves of Isengard, the last of which is the boss orc that makes Aragorn take a little tumble off the cliff. But that's all the stage is. It could have been tacked onto another Rohan level, but this is what we got. As cool as Rohan is, the levels in the two towers leave you wanting something a little more. The first Rohan stage, the Plains of Rohan, is a rescue mission. You simply run through the town freeing as many civilians from fires as you can, slaying uruk along the way. It's about as much as you could do, I suppose, with the limited action scenes of the film. Because when you think about it, in the movies, Rohan is mostly exposition about King Theoden. So what can the game really do with that? The best of Rohan gameplay is the Westfold. This stage has you running through the town, blowing up tons of explosives, which with the right timing can result in combo kills. Again, there's not too much to sing praises about, but it feels like the most action-packed out of all the Rohan levels. Next up on the list is Fangorn Forest of the Two Towers. The game takes the liberty of turning this short movie scene into a full-on battle, and it's pretty neat. There are orcs, goblins, and uruk for a good bit of it, and even a troll. But as you progress, you just find more and more trolls. So it's kind of a bit flat of a progression of orc, goblin, orc, troll, goblin, orc, troll. It's not one of the stages most remembered of the two games, but it's not bad. The worst of Return of the King's Hobbit levels has to go to Shelob's Lair. While it is a pivotal moment in the story and for the development of Samwise Gamgee, the little spider monsters are nothing but a pain in the butt. All you can seem to do is fiercely whack them, then stab them for a low score. The rest of the stage is a puzzle-based layout consisting of throwing torches to make tiny spiders scatter and burn webs. There are some orcs, but not enough to make the stage replayable. Shelob herself, however, is probably the most challenging fight in the game. Come back, you! I'm not done! We're climbing the ranks of the list now as we get to Return of the King's rendition of Helm's Deep. This is the introductory stage of the game as Gandalf, and it's much better than the prologue of the Two Towers. Although the stage is short, it introduces combat with Gimli, archery with Legolas, and the all-new action command with Aragorn. 
you get to see the finesse of Gandalf and blow crap up, and it just feels good to resume the greatest tale of our time at the end of one of the best battles. Because it's so short though, it's lower on the list. Next up is the breached wall of Helm's Deep in the Two Towers. This is the second phase of the epic battle where you must protect the door to the women and children. The music, however, is very subdued for the action for some reason, and the flood of enemies is less than you would hope for in such a tense moment. However, it all changes when they roll in the catapult. That thing destroys the door so fast, so you must hold on to hope as you try to destroy it before mission failure. It could have been better designed, but it's still fun. A little bit better than that stage is the first Helm's Deep level, the Deeping Wall. This is the iconic tower defense mission where you must knock down ladders and prevent the uruk from overrunning the wall. However, the mission starts out with shielded orcs, oddly, even though it's supposed to be 10,000 uruk -hai. It was a first taste of what could be awesome, but it's a little too quiet and easy. Return of the King features a much more fun wall mission. Moria, you fear to go into those mines. But actually, no, you don't because the level's pretty sweet. It's snowing, and Gimli is right alongside you the whole way as you plow through orcs for the first time in both games. Quickly, for Sway! <laughs> The progression just feels great, and the watery approach to the final boss pool is a nice touch. You even see an orc get grabbed by tentacles. And the rhythm in which you beat the boss feels so good on the controller. Its death moan is always satisfying. Fell beast. Next up is the road to Isengard. Gandalf leads the Ent Assault on Saruman, and it just feels good to blow crap up. There's not too many phases to the mission, unfortunately, but the part where you destroy towers from a distance is sweet, and protecting the final Ent to unleash the river is a fun moment. But above all else, the Christopher Lee quotes make the mission. Those trees are of ancient madness. They require burning before they destroy all who live near them. Next up is the Courtyard of Minas Tirith. This is Gandalf's final stand for the city after the enemy breaks in. You must endure wave after wave of increasingly powerful orcs, uruk and trolls until 200 civilians get to safety. Since that's all the mission is, it doesn't really deserve a place near the top, but heck if it isn't fun. The music, of course, is phenomenal for the moment, too. Better than the Courtyard is the Southern Gate of Return of the King. This is the ultimate level for grinding experience. There are an infinite number of orcs and uruk in a huge mob formation, making it super easy to reach perfect mode and rack up points. But the mission itself is fun too, as you fire catapults against the tower to build a path to the gate winch. There are two trolls, and at the top of the tower among the mobs of uruk is the first mumakil you'll ever take down. You might even say, look, Mr. Frodo, it's an elephant. Whatever you say, you'll be feeling good with how much you level up after this one. Making its way this high up on the list is the Two Towers depiction of Amon Hen. This is one of the Fellowship of the Ring's best scenes, and the interactive version does it justice. You start off just like the movie against the Horde of uruk and the Horn of Gondor blows in the distance again and again as Boromir calls for aid. <laughs> You rush through the forest slaying tons of uruk to the fantastic soundtrack and ultimately face off with the beastly Lurts, leader of the uruk and killer of Boromir. It feels great to be able to play this moment of the Fellowship. Ah yes, we come to the best wall defense mission, Return of the King's Minas Tirith. Here Gandalf must knock down ladders much larger than those in the Helm's Deep level and keep the wall from being overrun by uruk -hai. There are no shielded orcs this time, which is nice. Midway through the stage, trolls begin pushing towers toward the wall, which must be taken out with ranged attacks or the catapult. But if you use the catapult, the Witch King will interrupt and ruin your day. Eventually, the towers come too fast and the wall gets overrun anyway, at which point Gandalf goes on one last killing spree before leading every guard on the wall to the breached courtyard with haste. 
and absolutely awesome music. Better than the top of the wall is the escape from Osgiliath. In this mission, Sam, Frodo, and Smeagol run in the shadows between the battle of man versus orc, staying out of sight of the Nazgul. It feels great to have the meat and potatoes combat of the hobbits, and a level that is more like an adventure layout than pure action. But the action is intense because if you linger too long on the rooftops, the Nazgul will take the ring. The whole level ends with a big fat troll general dude who feels great to slay with a hobbit. One of the best levels in the Two Towers is the Hornburg Courtyard, the final stage. Here you must defend the door to the keep from tons and tons of enemies. Everything from shielded orcs to uruk and more. Partway through, Legolas gets himself into trouble, so you must rush to his aid, hoping Gimli can protect the door in your absence. Then you rush back to the door in desperation, only to hear someone shout, Archers on the wall! As you see flaming arrows bombard the door, you know you must run away again and take out the archers, leaving the door open to the strongest uruk -hai. Once the archers are gone, you sprint like a madman back to the weakening door, only for two huge trolls to come flying in. All you can do is mash buttons and hold on to hope, and it's this kind of intensity that makes it such a great mission. And now we come to the best level in the two towers, Balanced Tomb. Just like Amon Hen, this is one of the most memorable moments of the Fellowship of the Ring, and the game level does not disappoint. The opening cinematic is exactly like the movie, beat to beat, and you must slay orcs of all kinds while the Fellowship shouts lines from the films. It is the last time the whole Fellowship is together as a team in battle, and it feels great. Then, of course, the cave troll comes. While these games soon make trolls commonplace, this one is still special as it has a boss health bar. You must avoid its club long enough for it to break it. And then it's time for phase two, the chain. Your character rushes up to the second level just like Legolas does in the movie, and you must use arrows from behind pillars to take out the beast. It's a highly replayable stage and feels great every time, and they even did a good job on the lighting of the tomb itself. Near the top of the list is the final Hobbit level, Kareth Ungol. This stage is littered with little cunning traps for Sam to use and rack up perfect scores as he rushes to save Frodo. The best one is immediately after slaying a general, you cut a chandelier and kill roughly 30 orcs and uruk -hai, which if timed right all result in the highest score possible. Then there's dropping bridges on orcs, or pushing explosive barrels into a crowd. It all ends too with a catapult, followed by a boss fight with the shiny shirt orc that has a nice pattern to it. It's just great stage design for maximum fun no matter which character you take into it. The second best level in both games is the Black Gate. I almost ranked this one at the top because it's just so good. It is the final stand, kicking off with a one-on-one -on -one battle with the Mouth of Sauron followed by a flood of enemies from the front. By this point of the game, your character is likely maxed out, so you just spam your best combos and rack up perfect scores. Then, the generals start pouring in, and they typically target one of your allies. If your allies begin to lose health, you must stand near them to replenish it. So it's a constant juggle of slaying beasts and healing your team to prevent mission failure, as nobody is allowed to die. Halfway through, enemies begin pouring in from all sides, not just the front, making it that much harder. Once six generals are defeated, the Nazgul come, just like at Weathertop, only they're no joke this time. Flaming spears make them vulnerable to attacks, but you still must be ready to parry. It's not unlikely that your health will be very low by the time you take out the last one. But after all, you're doing this for Frodo. And at last, we come to the best level of both games, Pelennor Fields. The Black Gate is fantastic, but this one just has two major things that push it above. The first phase of slaying 60 enemies is not really anything unique, but of course it feels good. But the fun starts when the Momokil arrive. You must race atop a hill and use arrows and catapults to take down the four sections of the Momokil 
then rush to the end of the cliff to protect Eowyn and Mary from the Witch King. Then, more Mama Kill come, possibly on the complete other side of the mountain, meaning you have to rush down the hill, cross the battlefield full of Easterlings and Urukai, sprint up the next hill, and hope you make it in time. Just as you finish taking out the new Mama Kill, the Witch King comes again. So you are basically constantly sprinting across two sides of a mountain in this entire level, racing against invisible timers, and praying Eowyn and Mary can hold out. I greatly appreciate how frantic it is, and archery against the Mama Kill feels great every time. And there you have it! Every stage of the Two Towers and Return of the King ranked from worst to best. Do you agree with my list? What stages were your favorites? Feel free to comment below, and be sure to subscribe and check out my Let's Plays of both games. Thanks for watching! Take hold! The dead have come to save the living! Uh -huh.